Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Reflections and resolutions as 2021 comes to a close. Also tonight, premium pay for government workers while a proposal for retirers hits pause. And our community award goes to... In sports, we profile a young swimmer who is making waves. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Merry Christmas, friends are knocking on the door. Happy faces, warm embraces, all that we adore. Christmas night, we're together, no more time for feeling blue. Cause it's our little Christmas, and our dreams are coming true. Happy time, Merry Christmas, friends are knocking on the door. safe and comfortable when they're around me. I understand that there's so much anxiety surrounding COVID and I want to do my part in reducing that anxiety. I wanted to protect myself, my patients, my family, and my coworkers. I have students who also have um, underlying health issues and I know that this is my responsibility to take care of myself but also to protect them and their families. I encourage our community to go and get vaccinated, for it is our greatest hope to conquer the spread of coronavirus. Get vaccinated, ask questions, do it for our community. For the Marianas. Get vaccinated, CNMI. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich. From the makers of the world's most stolen fries, the juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. and good evening Commonwealth. Today is December 31, the last day of 2021. Lots of excitement as people prepare to welcome the new year. We head down to the streets of Susupi to know how some people felt about 2021 and what they look forward to in the new year to come. This is a time when people look back at some of the biggest and important moments they had this past year. These kids definitely took the time and thought of their favorite things that happened in 2021 and what they want to see in 2022. What was your most favorite thing that happened in 2021? Maybe how I learned to ride a bike very good in just two days. What's your most favorite thing that happened in 2021? Um, I got to, I got to have my dad come back from California because he, because he went to, 
he's a firefighter and he went to the Dixie Fire. Then oh, he came wow. back after three months. What do you look forward to in 2022? Well, I, well, I hope the coronavirus will go away so I can see my brother and sister. I'm looking forward to like going back to school and, and seeing my own teachers and classmates. I only know to ride like the old like the old style bikes, not like the new one. I wanna try like to learn how to ride a lot of different types of bikes. And for the grown-ups, here are some of their thoughts on the past year. Uh, but one of the great things that came out of the pandemic, and I, I can um, speak for my profession, um, you know how Medicaid used to just be a U.S. citizen-only benefit? Well, in June of 2020, because of the pandemic, they opened it up to everyone who qualified based on income, regardless of immigration status. So thousands of people that had never been able to get medical and dental care were able to now. So life has been really hard um, with the pandemic going on, and then it just got harder with like all our like politicians arguing online and stuff like that. With like you know, they just need to get together as one for all of us. Not being able to have gathering with my family because I like to spend time with my family and. Because of the pandemic, we were barely like able to get together this year. You know, everything changed because of this pandemic. Especially so, so. the prices of the commodities. Mm. <laughs> really going high. Hoping for the best this 2022. As 2022 is just around the corner, many are just staying positive and hopeful. Uh, we look forward to more um, say, uh, safe and healthy for uh, improve health on 2022. My New Year's resolution is to um, honestly get a car. Uh, to be back to the normal. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So right. everybody going to have fun. Hopefully yeah. people will change so that the COVID will be gone. Happy New Year! <laughs> Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year! Happy New Year to all. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Happy, Happy New Year! Year. The administration says premium pay is not just for the executive branch, but for other employees who work the front lines as well. Frontliners and employees under the executive branch were given premium pay for their work during the COVID-19 pandemic. Those who pulled at least 40 hours in direct COVID-19 response were given $5,000, while employees who provided public service during these hard times were given $1,000. Governor Ralph Torres states the premium pay isn't only for the executive branch, but also for other frontliners in autonomous agencies and private sectors. We have... Uh... All other divisions, departments, autonomous agencies has gotten their COVID money. Uh, so again, um, this is to give uh, a reward and it's just an acknowledgement for all the sacrifices that our frontliners have done throughout the last couple of years as well. Finance Secretary David Attalik states $30 million has been appropriated in the ARPA spending plan specifically for premium pay, which will be dispersed over two fiscal years. The Department of Finance processed the first batch for the executive branch on Thursday, which totaled to $3.6 million. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation received about $5.1 million for their distribution of premium pay, while the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation received $2 million. The CNMI ports received $900,000. Private medical clinics will also be included. In the first round, uh, we've identified and discussed to work with is the private medical clinics as well as the um, um, ambulatory and the dia uh, private dialysis centers that keep our, uh, our community um, serviced outside of CHCC. So we want to take care of those that are assisting um, in, in, in the medical side of things. Atelic states his team is currently doing research on different types of programs that can assist non-medical private sectors who have also provided public service during the pandemic. So my team has been researching on the different uh, programs that other states are doing and seeing if we can implement that and if we have uh, appropriate funding to allow for some of these great programs that other states are doing. Will CNMI retirees get a year-end bonus? The House and Executive Branch may not see eye-to-eye eye on this. 
The House of Representatives has yet to pass legislation that will give the governor some room to move around funds and give CNMI retirees their year-end bonus. At the last House session, members agreed to hold off on the resolution and request for further clarification on the funding sources. Governor Ralph Torres says his office has not received any communication on the matter just yet, and he urges the lawmakers to make a move now. I'm just, you know, I'm... Um, I'm hurt because uh, that's a priority. The money is there. Uh, they removed my 100% reprogramming authority. Um, and now we have to go back uh, <clears throat> to the recommendation of the settlement fund. All they have to do, I mean, the Senate passed a resolution. All they need to do, the House is pass, uh, pass that resolution. If they disagree, which they have, then why don't they create a, a, a same resolution? Follow the resolution, start in the House, and pass it. Uh, if it calls for an emergency session, then we should. Uh, I'll be happy to sit here and wait uh, and have the retirees get their bonuses. Through a joint resolution, Torres requested that the legislature give back his reprogramming authority and create a new business unit for the retiree bonuses. It was passed in the Senate but stopped at the House as members said the governor's request lacked information. In a press briefing on Thursday, Finance Secretary David Atalik addressed some of their concerns. We do not, obviously we cannot use ARPA funds to help the retirees. That is one of the unallowable uh, points of ARPA. We're limited with uh, general funds, and uh, we ask that uh, the, uh, the, the legislature give, give approval to the governor to reprogram $1.3 million for our hard, you know, our deserving retirees. Besides the concerns on the use of ARPA funds, the lawmakers also question how this may affect the fiscal year budget. Atalik addressed the issue as well. We're not increasing, so there's no need to say that we need additional 25% allocation to PSS. There's no um, reduction or increase in the current budget level. Therefore, there's and there's no asking for appropriation. We're just asking for reprogramming um, uh, authority because the governor uh, did not have the 100% reprogramming authority based on the current budget act. So we need this action to be done in order to help our retirees. Retirees were supposed to receive a $500 bonus this month. The governor and finance secretary Atalik says the settlement fund is currently on standby and is ready to receive the funds as soon as it is processed. The CNMI community was spared from COVID for one whole year and 10 months. Unfortunately, that all changed this year. In just two months, more than 3,000 residents have been infected with COVID-19. Ten lives have been taken away. The CHCC reports that out of the ten, seven were unvaccinated. As of December 29, there are 14 hospitalizations with two individuals on a ventilator. More than 2,000 recoveries have been made, but there is still over 700 active cases. As family and friends gather to welcome the new year, Governor Torres has two pieces of advice. Look at the, the, the record in the last uh, 10, right, or 11. Uh, how many death uh, is unvaccinated? And I hope that everybody realizes that that science shows us and tells us to please get vaccinated and get your booster if you can um, and make that a priority. That'll be my first advice. Second is continue to do as much as you can, um, do your social distancing and, and spend time with your families. But again, um, if you don't have to, then you shouldn't go and, and, and do social as much as you can. It's basically just every individual, try to stay home as you can and try to do your social distancing on your three W's when you do go out to uh, social gatherings. Coming up, a challenge accepted by people all over the world. Stay tuned. <music> Thank you.
love and commitment. It's amazing how these two words can transform our lives. The last time I was in Saipan was in July 2020 for my daughter's baptismal. With my position here at work, I'm unable to go back as much as I'd like to to visit my daughter being that there's still a, the lockdown still in place here in Guam. And as long as we value these two important things, we can make wonders. I always talk to her when I'm cooking or when packing my lunch for work. And then when I go home and then I talk to her when I get off of work, uh, I always ask her how her day was. This is where we draw our strength, our happiness, our passion to make everything and every day a lot easier. It's about making every day amazing and giving that extra effort to make all the little things work. In most places, in most moments. And it's our commitment to what we love and who we love that makes us stronger together. Happy New Year, Marianas. As we end 2021 and reflect on the obstacles and blessings that crossed our path, let us greet 2022 with hope, joy, and peace. Moving forward together, let's welcome the new year for our Commonwealth and look forward to 2022 being a year to revitalize our economy, rebuild our infrastructure, strengthen our relationships, with our federal partners, and just as importantly, get stronger in our fight against COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. Sidhus Masi to each of you for your continued cooperation with vaccinations, COVID-19 directives and guidelines, your proactiveness and willingness to do your part is evidence of the love you have for the people in your lives. Together, when we each do our part, we are stronger as a community. In celebration of closing 2021 and welcoming 2022, Governor and I wish you all a very safe, happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Tansu Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The push-up challenge is coming to an end, or perhaps a new beginning. Our Chris Nelson is doing push-ups right now, and on this last day of December, he checks in with fellow participants from around the world who all have a Mariana Islands connection. 2021, the general goal, 100 push-ups a day, 36,500 for the year. Some do a bit less, some do a bit more. 110 became a popular daily goal in 2021. I guess that means giving it 110%. Main idea, to set a goal and do it. All you need is to find a little ground. You don't need a gym. You don't need a huge time commitment. Some do four sets of 25, others two sets of 50, and some 10 sets of 10. And while the pandemic surged and ebbed and surged again, there were 
encouraging words along the way. Oh, yeah. Ning, ning, good. There were little push-ups. Nine, ten. Good job, Declan. And luta push-ups. Push-ups de Mexico. Coco head push-ups. Lakeside push-ups. Flower pedal to the metal push-ups. <laughs> Work those triceps. Slightly out of frame push-ups. Nature or nurture, who says you can't have both? You do want to make sure you have a good platform, a good location, and some language skills. Este es mi casa en la ciudad de México. Mi casa es tu casa, no? Canai's push-ups included a bridge. Pete made his own bridge, but lost his shoes. How about some thunder from down under in Western Australia? Hey, is that Channing Tatum? Lisa's from New Zealand, but she busts these push-ups out in the middle of Texas. Her husband, Matt, engineers a few as well. Ah, those pebbles hurt. <laughs> Josh Gabaldon, always good at taking the temperature of the room. Here's 10 a 10. Whoever said money can't buy happiness, tell that to happiness, my golden retriever. <laughs> Sean Frank is a big, strong man. Jeff Ray, surfing USA. Three sisters outside of Bend, Oregon. Going Oregon Coastal for a quick 20. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. Happy holidays from West Virginia. I got up at 5.30 this morning, ran 11 miles, swam two, stretched, had some celery juice, and started lying about everything. Remember when yoga was called Twister? Teamwork's an awesome way to keep the momentum in Montana. Jeff and Matt, full costume and full participation. They get extra credit for the claps. Sean and Kirsten doing it Washington style. Extra push-ups this year for Russ Quinn. All right. Is that it? And gold star push-ups for Jake. There were table rock push-ups, high altitude push-ups. Don't judge Heather as she tries to get the kids involved. Whatever you're doing, it's good to not be on the fence. 98, 99, 100. 100. It takes a long time to do 100 push-ups, especially when you're doing them in super slow motion, as Scott Countryman finds out but sometimes the wait is worth it. Happy New Year, everybody. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Chris. Now our 2021 Community Award goes to someone who put their all into capturing some of the most important history of the Northern Mariana Islands. Our Chris Nelson has more. For the past three decades, Bob documented and crafted local sports, brought them into our lives and into our homes. He shot his own video, wrote his own scripts, and diligently put all his creativity into each sports newscast. Equal parts historian and storyteller, sometimes the sports cast was even better than being there. When I go shoot, I'm, I have one eye on the game, and then I have one eye on everybody else. Because it, the, the whole, it's more than just the you know, five players on a team or nine players on a team. It's also the people in the stands, it's people on the bench, it's people in the score booth, it's, you know, it's people walking around. So it, it's, the way I look at sports here isn't just between the lines, it is a community event. Bob first started doing TV sports in 1993. He'd been on the job about a year when a new news director from California started to tinker with his easygoing look. One day after the show, he goes, Bob, can, do you mind if uh, can I talk to you after the show? Here? Goes, sure. He goes. So he calls me over. It's like, he's calling me over. Like, this is not even, in, he doesn't want anybody else to hear this. So it's just the two of them. Bob, uh, he's kind of, you know, really like, 
being cautious on it. Bob, is it okay if, if you wore a tie on the set? And uh, I don't like ties, I don't wear ties, I normally don't. And, but for being a team player, sure if that's what you want. My last Christmas at the legislature, Lillian Atta Tenorio bought me this really ugly red tie as a gag gift, knowing that I don't wear ties and I don't like ties. So it was a pretty funny gift. And I never worn it in my whole life. But then after Travis asked me, all right, I'll wear a tie. So the next day, the next time, I wore that tie on the set. And I had the shirt button up, you know, tight here and it gets, you know, not, not really the best looking <laughs> picture, right? And so after the show, but I did it. And Travis uh, called me over and said, Bob, you know, I really appreciate, you know, you, you know, going along with this. But I was thinking, you know, you don't, you don't have to wear a tie if you don't want to. If you just want to wear a cap and shirt, that's, that's fine, go ahead. Oh, okay, sure, thanks, Travis. In TV sports, you work hard to get good video and good audio, and then you write your script. Words are chosen carefully, and they will be placed in and around the natural sounds and video of the action and the interviews. The greatest compliment I ever got was uh, Mike White the former president of the Sports Association. You know, Bob, before you came, sports was boring here. Bob began to learn his love of language 50 years ago. First quarter, freshman year at the University of Florida, Bob met Harry Cruz, an author and professor. He would tell stories, and he brought language, and he brought meaning, and everything was important, it meant something. And if it didn't have to do with the blood and bone, it wasn't important. The only things important in this life are blood and bone. You make it sound like that. You gotta make people feel like that. And that's what he did. And so after that, I started reading. I started paying attention to language. Last quarter of his senior year, Coldine took Cruz again in a creative writing course. I got a B. And I, he said, Bob, you really write. These are, he read one of the sentences. This is, this is really like poetry. It's a really good sentence. But what's your story? You don't have a story here. What's this about? This is just a bunch of nice sentences put together. You got to have some kind of, it's got to mean something to other people to be a story. You don't have that. And the truth is, you know, I was 21 years old. I, I didn't have any stories. So now that I'm 70, yeah, I got a lot of stories. Bob has written books, poems, eulogies, and thousands and thousands of sports stories. He's also coached, managed, presided, volunteered, and cheered. He's a team player and Bob's an Iron Man never called in sick and was always a steady hand who answered the call and made the call each and every night. As we all know, sports is not just about showing up, you have to perform. And Bob consistently did that at such a high level for three decades. This year's Community Award winner, Bob Coldine. Congratulations, Bob. You truly deserve that award. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we still have sports for you. On behalf of the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services, we would like to wish our community a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, stay safe, and remember three W's. Thank you. Happy Holidays from DFEMS. We here at DFEMS Operation Section wishes you a Happy Holidays and stay safe. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to everybody! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy Holidays!
Ready to quit tobacco? Call the CNMI Tobacco Quit Line at 670-323-7848. Visit your dental clinic for a free oral health screening. You are everything that matters to me, and I promise to do whatever it takes to keep you healthy, to be comfortable, and to be free. I love you as long as we're together. I'll always make sure that home will always be our best place to breathe. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Sue Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. And now for the KSPN2 Sports Report, we feature a young swimmer who just recently came back from Abu Dhabi. Dream as big as you can dream and anything is possible. A quote by Michael Phelps. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Tonight, we feature a senior from Morganas High School who recently broke the Cinemai swim record in the men's 50-meter freestyle. His name is June Tenorio. Uh, my name is June Tenorio and I'm 17 years old. I go to Morganas High School and I'm a senior. Tenorio began swimming when he was just five years old. I started swimming at the age of five because uh, my godbrother was swimming and just the influence. He is a longtime member of Tsunami Saipan, a swim club that was founded 14 years ago. My team uh, is called Tsunami Saipan, established 2007, and um, we practice every day except for Thursday and Sunday, and we've been doing that for the past, the, my whole time, my whole life. Tenorio plays other sports like basketball and soccer, but swimming is where his heart is. Um, I play soccer and all of the basketball for fun, but my main sport is swimming because um, I don't know, I just feel very connected to it and very, I feel very happy doing it. He is part of the NMI national swim team and he is confident that his team will always deliver good results. It feels good to represent my family and my team. And I just want to show our island that we can win. Despite of their hard trainings, one of the challenges they are facing right now is the closure of the pool in Marpy. Uh, the challenge is that we don't have an official pool to race in, 
So it was just straight up hard work every day with no way to show our hard work. So for like three years, we've just been only training and I'm happy we brought back results this time. They used to have a lot of trainings and a lot of competitions in the Marpy Pole. That was our main training place and um, we would have all of our competitions over there. So we were all devastated that they just let it be and let it go. So they left us without a dream to chase and I'm happy that we still brought back results even though we don't have a real pool to train in. And I want people to know that if we had a real pool to train in, I think we would have been better. Tenoria competed locally as well as in different countries representing Sinamai. Uh, we competed in Japan, Guam, Palau, Abu Dhabi, oh. Korea. Every year he looks forward to compete in the Saipan International Meet. In Saipan there's one, there's a big meet always in March every year. It's called Saipan International Meet. That's where all of our the islands come in. Bonpei, Guam, uh, Palau and all of those islands. And we would compete. Um, and that was the most exciting time of the year. And it was interesting uh, going against the top athletes of the other uh, islands and felt good. Just recently, he competed in the 15th FINA World Swimming Championships that was held in Abu Dhabi. So we just recently came back from Abu Dhabi, like last week, and our coach was um, the coach of my team. And we brought back very good results considering our situation and everything. I'm trying to get into a Division I school for swimming, and I'm, I got the time that I'm able to talk to them, so I'm happy we got to do that. His biggest achievement is making Sinamai swimming history as he broke the record in the men's 50-meter freestyle. The biggest achievement uh, has to be my recent race in the 50 freestyle in Abu Dhabi. I broke the fastest record um, held by my former senior teammate. So it felt good to know that we're getting better, better and um, still improving. And I just know that hard work paid off. Tenoria has this great advice to the young swimmers out there. I just want to say that just believe in uh, the coach and just work hard every day. Don't mind the distractions, don't mind what other people have and what we don't have. Because we prove that we don't have the best facility on this island, we don't have uh, all these gears, but we're still one of the best national teams on our island. And just don't give up. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. One of the best gifts you can give yourself is a healthy diet. At Gold's, our pre- and post-workout formula is loaded into every smoothie giving you a satisfying meal with fewer calories. Perfect to enhance a workout or replace a meal. In December, try our Smoothie of the Month for just $5.50. It's got great stuff in it like soy milk, bananas, spinach, chocolate, and mint. 302 calories, 23 grams of protein, and seven grams of fat. Fast food that's good for you and tastes great. Shake it up at Gold's Gym, Garapan. And your weather report, mostly sunny east-northeast wind 13 to 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. Tonight it'll be partly cloudy with isolated showers. East-northeast winds 8 to 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 18 miles per hour. High 86, low 77 and 84% humidity. Tomorrow expect mostly sunny with isolated showers. East-northeast wind 8 to 13 miles per hour. 
High 85, low 77, and combined seas of 7 to 8 feet will begin to rise Saturday and expected to reach hazardous levels of 10 feet over the weekend. Moderate trade winds are expected to increase Saturday night. The sunrise will be at 4, 6.42 a.m., high tide 4.41 p.m., low tide 11.16 a.m., and the sunset at 5.37 p.m. All right, folks, there you have it. That is your weekend edition of the news, sports, and weather. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you here next year. Have a great weekend.